Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is October 14th through the 20th of the Come Follow Me program associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This week, we are studying 3 Nephi chapters 20 through 26. Now, in these chapters, we find Christ, and he is continuing to teach the people in the Americas. And he teaches them regarding all sorts of things. He teaches them about keeping records. He teaches them about the sacrament. He prophesies about the last days. He teaches them to treasure the words of Isaiah. There's a lot of things that he's teaching them. And at one point in time, he asks Nephi to bring forth the records that had been kept regarding his people. Nephi does so, and Christ notices that there is an account missing, and it's the account of Samuel the Lamanite. Samuel had been commanded to go and preach to the wicked Nephites, warning them that they needed to repent, that Christ was coming in five years. And because of this, there were a bunch of non-believers who were going to put some believers to death because the sign hadn't showed up yet, and they were just going to kill all the believers for believing in the sign. Because the Lord had manipulated the details beforehand, it all worked out according to his timing and everything worked out miraculously. And this was the record that was missing. And this is what happens when Christ talks to Nephi about it. So this is 3 Nephi chapter 23, and it's verses 12 through 13. It says, And it came to pass that Nephi remembered that this thing had not been written. And it came to pass that Jesus commanded that it should be written. Therefore, it was written according as he commanded. Now, Christ obviously focuses on the most important things. He is a busy person, and so he prioritizes and sticks to his priorities. So why, both in this account and also in times, in modern times, why has the Lord asked us to keep records. Why has that been important to him? Before I jump into the why, I kind of want to cover what he might mean when he's asking us to keep a sacred record. I think it's much broader than what we originally assumed. Nephi had to carve into plates in order to keep these records. However, in our day, I think it can extend to a lot of different things. On a surface level, we can take pictures. Those are records. We can take pictures of the things that matter most to us. We can write a journal or type a journal on Google Docs like I do or on a note on your phone if you just jot down a couple of things. You can keep a gratitude journal, which a gratitude journal is actually how I got into journal writing. I started with just a simple gratitude journal. And it really got me into that habit. You can make a video every once in a while of things that are important to you and things that have been going on. You can create a photo book with captions about things that are important to you. You can record your journal on your phone and then periodically transfer it to your computer according to date. And I'm sure there are even free dictation programs that will literally just write out your voice recording for you and you can put that in a journal. What I'm trying to say is that there are so many ways that we can record. If you think about it, the scriptures that we're reading used to be given orally. They were given out loud and then someone wrote them down. There are so many ways that we can keep records, even if you're not a good writer. Now, the second principle that I want to talk about when it comes to keeping a record is that It kind of comes from this idea of commandments in general. When Christ gives us a commandment, it's because he wants us to change. If you are not being changed by keeping a record, you're not getting your fullest return on your investment of time, and it is likely that you are going to discontinue the practice. So when you do choose to record... Record the most important things. Record the lessons you learned, the times when you saw the Lord bring together details in your life. Record dreams that felt 
different than other dreams. Record your feelings, not just events. And you don't have to record everything perfectly. If you don't have perfect feelings, record those anyway. Record yourself as you are and include him in that process. When we look at commandments in general, for example, when we look at the law of Moses, the law of Moses wasn't about sacrificing animals. It wasn't about washings. It wasn't about not eating certain things. It was about drawing closer to Christ. It was about understanding him and drawing near to him. And that's the case for all of his commandments. Include him in your process of keeping a record. Even in the silly details, that might not seem to matter that much to everybody, but but Christ wants to be involved in those details. I believe that keeping a record is much broader than what we originally assume. It doesn't have to be done on plates. It doesn't even have to be done on paper. And if you're going to make a goal about keeping a record, if you can, instead of focusing on how often you're going to write those kinds of things, Make a goal about how to help that process of keeping a record change you. How is this process going to be meaningful? How are you going to write it? How are you going to record it? I have likely not discovered all of the reasons that the Lord asks us to keep a record. However, there have been a few powerful reasons that I have discovered as I have kept the commandment to write to record. The overarching, most powerful lesson I have received as I've kept a record is increased faith in Jesus Christ. And it sounds so simple, but it is so very potent. And there are two ways that keeping a record has helped me increase my faith in Christ. The first one is that keeping a record enables me to process my life with him. When I would run into something difficult as I was growing up, sometimes I dealt with it by myself because I was stubborn or self-destructive, but sometimes I dealt with it myself because I forgot to include the Lord. I didn't even think about including the Lord. It didn't occur to me because I did not yet have that relationship with him that it was natural to turn to him. I've kept a journal since I was 14 because I like writing, but it wasn't really until my mission that I started including the Lord as I kept, as I kept a record. And it happened that when I would come across difficulties, because I had this habit of including the Lord as I wrote, I would be inspired with how he would respond to my difficulties. It would, because it was a habit to include him as I was writing, when I would write these difficult things, it would just naturally lead to me asking for help. For example, when we were in Virginia and we were living in that hotel for three months and there were things that I was really worried about and struggling with, I would write it down. And one of the things I remember writing down was that I was afraid that we were going to miss out on whatever house we were supposed to be in. I was afraid that we weren't going to be in tune with the Spirit enough and that the house that we were supposed to go to was just going to be taken by someone else or that we were supposed to be renting and it was all just so confusing. But as I took those fears and I wrote them down and I put them out there, I was able to look at them more objectively. They were no longer in my head. And so I was able to question the validity of it. I was able to look at that and I was able to cross-examine it with what I have learned about Jesus Christ. And so instead of getting all worked up about this worry that we were going to miss out on what the Lord had for us, I was able to look at my knowledge of the Savior and say, the Savior loves me and if I'm trying, he will help me go where I need to go. So when I got these thoughts out of my head, when I recorded them and looked at them, and when I included the Lord in the process, 
I was able to make my thoughts more accurate. And the same thing would happen when I was angry with someone. When I was angry, I would write about it. And when I put those thoughts out of my head, I could observe them far more objectively. And I was able to change them according to eternal realities. And doing this repeatedly allowed me to change my patterns of thinking. That conscious changing, when I would record something, when I would consciously change it, it started happening more naturally inside of my head as well. And because I was able to change those thought patterns, I changed. When I was recording my experiences and my feelings, I was able to watch the Lord in real time influence my thoughts and my feelings. I watched him support me, remind me. I watched him stretch me. And because I was having these experiences with a perfect being, my faith naturally increased in him. After spending that time with him, my faith increased. The second way that my faith has increased by keeping a record, now I debated whether to tell this story, but I figured if President Monson can tell a story about almost starting a forest fire, I can include my story. So one of the things that we do in our family is we took family home evening for a while and we used it to teach about emergency situations. So I was teaching fire safety to my kids and I was actually very proud of the fact that I was teaching fire safety to my kids. And I taught them that if there's smoke coming in under your door, you don't open the door. You're not supposed to open the door. You're supposed to keep the door closed. And I taught them to open the window and scream for help and just wait in their rooms until firemen got there or until mom came and got them. My son is extremely adventurous and brave and it's wonderful. And it has pros and cons from the perspective of a parent. My son, we taught him how to open a window so he could scream if there was a fire. And he opened the window, he pushed the screen out, and he climbed onto the roof. Luckily, our neighbor was outside. He was a good friend of ours. His son was friends with our son. Anyway, he yelled at Warner to get back in the house, and then he texted us so we could know what had happened. Now, the particularly relevant part of this story, the next day, so I type, I've said this before, but I type my prayers in a note every day just so I can focus better. And the next day, I open my computer, and the day after Warner climbed out onto the roof, I opened my computer, and I went to go delete the note that I had prayed the day before. And my eyes kind of zoomed in before I deleted it. It zoomed in on this prayer that I had said for Warner before, and I had prayed that the right adults would be in his life at the right times, because I knew that I wasn't always going to be able to be there for him. I knew that I wouldn't always be available, and so I prayed that the right adults would be there at the right time to help him. And I didn't even think about it in this specific context, obviously, but I saw the Lord fulfill that. Our neighbor was outside at the perfect time and yelled at Warner to get back in the house. So that was Warner was protected. And when I consider all of the escapades that Warner gets into, I feel like the Lord would have protected Warner anyway. No righteous person would be taken before their time. I feel like Heavenly Father would have protected him anyway. However, because I recorded it, I was able to recognize it. I was able to recognize him actively working in my life. He could have still brought our neighbor out to yell at Warner to get back in the house. But because I recorded my thoughts, specifically my prayers in this instance, because I recorded it, I was able to recognize him. And this has happened over and over and over and over and over. As I have recorded, the Lord has opened my eyes 
to how he has been involved in my life. And I believe the Lord would be involved in my life anyway because he loves me. And I know all throughout my life he's been manipulating the details to prepare me, to prepare things around me, to set currents in motion that would come about later on in life. And I believe that he would do that anyway because he loved me. But because I started recording it, I was able to see him. And because I can look back and see him in the past, I know he's going to show up in the future. And that's, that's increased faith. As I have kept a record, as I have observed my experiences more objectively, as I have changed my thought patterns to be more accurate, I have been able to very consciously watch Christ support me and stretch me to change me and my thoughts to be more accurate. As I have recorded, the Lord has been given consecrated time to open my eyes so that I could see him influencing my life. When we record, when we keep a sacred record, we can more easily see him in our lives. And when we can see him in our lives, we trust him because of who he is. And as we learn to trust him, we are happier. It is that simple and that powerful. I know why the Lord asks us to keep records. It's changed so much about me and my life. And not all of my recordings are necessarily spiritual. A lot of them are temporal. But they have become sacred to me because I have learned that the Lord is involved in all aspects of my life. Not just the spiritual ones. I testify of a Lord who is involved in your life. Of a Lord who manipulates all of the details ahead of time, whether they're trials or tender mercies, that they all come together for your benefit. I testify of a Lord who would be wholly involved in your life, who is wholly involved in your life, whether or not you recognize him because of how much he loves you. I also testify that as you record, you will be able to recognize him. And because you recognize him, you'll be able to take that knowledge and apply it to your future to worry less because you've seen him show up in the past. Very consciously, you've seen him show up in the past, and so you start to believe that he'll show up in the future. I'm so grateful he commanded us to keep a sacred record. It is powerful, and it has enabled me to learn of him, to experience him, to trust him. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.